Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day everyone. So we have come to the last topic of ELC 501 and that is evaluating arguments. So these are your learning outcomes. Now before we learn how to determine author's argument, let us first get to know the reason of evaluating one's argument. Now in our life, we will often receive persuasion from people around us. They will persuade us to accept their ideas or beliefs or thoughts or opinions. I'm pretty sure uh, given with the uh, you know, uh, issues going on on social medias, uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, we often receive uh, information that may be persuasive at hand and uh, we can be easily persuaded by the notion, uh, whether intended or unintended, in that so-called information. So it is not wrong for one to fall into the ideas of others. It is okay. You know, because we live in a free country whereby we can choose whichever that we want to choose to believe in. So, however, it is crucial for one to evaluate the argument presented before making any decision. This is where critical thinking comes in. Because sometimes what may seem to be true can be false at times. So it is very essential and critical as well for a person to understand in evaluating arguments presented by any authors on any platform, be it articles, be it um, books, magazine, newspapers, personal opinions, etc. So the chart below shows the structure of a com common argument. Um, statement, the writer is asking the reader to accept and reasoning that supports the statement to ensure that the reader will accept the statement. Now let us look at this given excerpt. How important is English to you? English has always been a universal language since the rise of Western civilizations, especially Great Britain and America. And in some cultures, accepting English as a second or third language is a big no. They fear that this movement, this movement is a form of sorry, indoctrination and occupation of Western cultures in the 21st century. Now, what these people fail to realize is that English has become too common and universal that even Great Britain and America cannot claim for its ownership. So English has helped people in many ways and it is believed to continue doing so for the next few centuries. Based on the excerpt above, answer the following questions. Now, the first question is, what is the argument presented in the excerpt? Now, how can you know what an argument is? Basically, is the main idea. It is something that the author wants the reader to accept. It is something that the author wants to persuade the reader to fall into it. If you ask me, I personally feel that an argument is basically the main point, the main idea presented in that excerpt. So if you have this in your mind, and that is English as a universal language where people use it everywhere across the world, across the globe, so on and so forth, then you are on the right track. And what are the premises? Basically evidence to support that so-called argument. So this evidence is taken from the text itself. Now, this is a continuation process uh, of the process of evaluating author's arg argument before. Now, to make this simpler and easier, below is a complete process of evaluating author's argument, reasoning, validity, and credibility in presenting an idea or issue. Now, number one is, what is being, sorry, basically you ask this question to yourself, what is the issue being discussed? So, once you have answered this question, you move on to step number two. What is the author's point of view regarding this issue? Is there a bias in his point of view? So let's just put uh, the issue is we should um, we should uh, use English in teaching mathematics and science in Malaysia, for example. So that's that's the issue being discussed. So what is the author's point of view? Whether the author agrees with the with the issue, disagrees, agrees and disagrees at the same time. And when we talk about bias of his point of view, 
you may want to go to certain extension uh, or to certain length to get to know the authors and how the author is directly connected or related to the issue at hand. For example, if the author is a teacher or science teacher or a mathematics teacher, then perhaps he is being biased towards the issue or, you know, biased in the sense that whether he agrees or disagrees. And the third step is, are there any assumptions made by the author regarding the issue? So did he make any assumption? So this is the part that you may want to ask yourself because later on in your test questions, there will be, key, uh, there will be questions asking you what is the underlying question, uh, sorry, underlying assumption. And you ask yourself, is there any assumption? So what is basically an assumption? There will be just a small topic right after this. Next, what types of supports are presented by the author to make his or her case? So you have to go back and look at the reasonings, the evidence provided in order to uh, support or to go against the, 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 the issue discussed in that so-called excerpt or in that so-called text. Number five, is the support directed to the argument? Is the support credible? So you have to go through. If it is, let's say, um, if it is, um, uh, for example, a data taken from a research, so you have to uh, find out the validity and credibility of the data as well as the research. Is the support objective or subjective? Objective means you have data, something that can be calculated, something that can show, something that can show proofs. Subjective can just be a matter of one's opinions, thoughts, beliefs, so on. Is the argument complete? Did the author manage to support his argument completely? So is it a well-rounded uh, argument where the author managed to the author manages to discuss uh, and also present the argument completely. Is the argument valid or logical? Is the argument credible or unbelievable? So these are the questions that you may want to ask yourself. Now let us move on to the underlying assumptions because the question in your test may ask you on this part. Now what is basically an underlying assumption? An underlying assumption is the underlying meaning of the main point stated or not stated perhaps in a text or a paragraph or an excerpt. So below is how to determine the underlying assumption. The first is to determine the main point of the text, paragraph or excerpt. When we talk about the main point, all I'm trying to say here is try to determine the argument presented in that, in that excerpt or in that text. What is the argument? What is basically is being discussed and whether the author agrees or disagrees with the issue discussed. Second, infer the main point that is go beyond then the stated meaning of the main point. If that if this is the given uh, meaning, the literal meaning of this uh, argument or, or this of this main point, you need to go a little bit beyond than that in order for you to understand better what is the underlying meaning of this main point. So if you do not know how to infer uh, a statement, you may need to refer to um, uh, my lecture notes and lecture videos that talks about making inferences and drawing conclusions. The third one is with the underlying assumption form a complete sentence. Now let us do a bit of exercise. Now we have read this before. This is the excerpt given previously. Now, what is the argument? So we agree upon that the argument is English as a universal language. So this is the argument slash the main point that you have identified. The question may ask you, what is the underlying assumption? English language helps people around the world in many ways as it belongs to everybody. So basically, with that argument, I form my underlying assumption in a complete sentence. And where do I get this? This is my inference, how I infer the argument or the main point. This is how I infer English as a uni universal language. So whatever inference that, I, that I've come up with, that would be my underlying assumption. It can be in phrases or words, and I rephrase them, reword them, and making them in a complete sentence, like this one. English language helps people around the world in many ways, as it belongs to everybody. So what is the first evidence? This is the first evidence taken from the text. This is the second evidence taken from the text. It's very easy if you know how or if you understand the concept. 